you know, there's a lot of noise going on off off the basketball court with the program right now. How do you keep that from the players from distracting them? And do you even try to keep that from the players? I don't. You don't try to. You know, it obviously is out there. Whatever it is, and you know, I, I think our guys are focused. Um, you know, when you look at you know the way we've been playing over the last five games, even though a lot of the results didn't work out in our favor, the the, the focus is there, uh, especially with a young team where it could be. It could go the other way, which it could be really disastrous. So, uh, I, we, you know, you don't say that. You don't address it. You know, guys are, you know, they interpret it whatever they read and, and for whatever it is. And then, you know, they kind of practice. They're ready to play. And we just keep move on. You know, also another thing that could be a distraction is every team main goal is to get to the NCAA tournament. And, you know, it's hard to not see where teams are in, in, in with their records and on the bubble and with everything going on. How do you keep a team focused when the, the road at hand is pretty steep? You know, and I, and I think Coach Bam has done a phenomenal job throughout the year. You know, and it started from day one when we had everybody – on campus and we got everybody together, you know, coach was just like one day at a time. And I was just that practice. And it might sound cliche, but I, I swear, if you ask everybody on our team from top to bottom, uh, what does coach say when we break the huddle after every practice or, you know, every team function is, is one day at a time. And uh, that's how, that's how we've been. So when it comes to like the NCAA, the bubble, you know, quad one wins and all that stuff, we, we, we you know, we've just been super focused on just getting better day by day. And, uh, and and I said, you know, I think last show, you know, at the end of the day, these guys play like uh, we play against a quad one team every time. You know, it's just like they, they're so young, you know, they don't, you don't know what to expect sometimes. And it's just what it is and uh, with the nature of this team. But we, we just got to stay focused. And I think we've done a great job with that. You know, there's a job that kind of goes under the radar for assistant coaches also is, especially now in the, in the time of the transfer portal, how do you keep guys happy? You know, everybody's getting playing time this year, but it's spread out. You know, how do you keep guys happy when it isn't their turn? I think being honest, um, you know, you know, especially, you know, for us, for me, I can't speak for everybody else, but you know, I'm, I, my personality is my personality and I'm not going to change that like that for anybody. Uh, but the one thing that, you know, I, you can ask any of the guys on our team is that, I try to be as honest as possible, um, and, and that's the, the best thing that you can have. So now they take the information or what's going what's going on in that situation, and and and, and use the honesty, and hopefully it, it, it motivates them to get better. That's the only way I learned. Uh, you know, when I came here, you know, coach is very honest with me from up front. You know, coach Hop was my guy here, and he's very upfront and honest with me. So you know, that's what I try to give off. So. You know, how do you use your experience also here? Coach Beheim mentioned you as a great example of a guy who fought through adversity here at Syracuse. Yeah, I, 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 try, to, I try to tell him the story. I, I just pulled Claudia Copeland over to the side, and I just told him to keep working. Um, you know, it can happen overnight. You can, you know, not play in one game, and, and then you can play 30 minutes in the next, but you got to be ready for that, prepare for that, and, and don't cheat yourself. You know, and that's not – Nothing that he's doing. That's just something that I've seen. I just say, hey, you know, we were just sitting out eating breakfast, and I just told him, you know, my story when I was in his situation here. Yeah, you know, and the, 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 the crazy thing about my situation here is, like, I was a starter. I, was a, I came off the bench with a, with a, made a big role as a freshman. Then I then went to not playing a lot as a junior. So I had a numerous amounts of experiences here. So, you know, I, I try to give off those experiences to uh, to our guys and that, that need it. And, and sometimes some of them don't need it, but I still give it to them just to let them know that, you know, we've been there. You know, I've woken up, you know, 20 below zero, and and and, and we got to come to practice for the fifth straight day. You know, I, I I'm experienced. I experienced the things that they they're going through, and, uh, and and I'm empathetic to you know their feelings. I want to ask you about Jesse. You know, we had a caller call in yesterday and just talk about how much he's progressed from his freshman year to now. You know, as his coach, maybe you could tell us what the change has been in from day one to now. I think maturity. I think um, I think Ryan Cabillas has done a phenomenal job of getting Jesse to the point where he can log the minutes that he's logging and play at a high level. Um, and, and it's just that, and 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 the way he's and he didn't 
you know, the, the great thing about Jesse is, is I always talk about process and he didn't cheat the process and he didn't get frustrated at the process. Yeah. He was a little disappointed because he wanted to play early on in his career, but he kept working and, you know, his work is just paying off and you just seeing a, a glimpse of who he can really be, you know, uh, and what he can really become. So, uh, he just never cheated the process, uh, and, and, and he believed in us as a staff, and, and that's why, you know, he's uh, uh, showing real good promise right now. Maybe you could talk about his performance against BC. It felt like he was scoring on the post more in, in making moves Who's that Shaq? we didn't see. Who, Shaq? We just call him Shaq. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's a joke. But, uh, no, nah, he, he, was, he was great. He was aggressive from the tip. I think he had a little out of incentive just because, you know, he's playing against one of his childhood friends. Uh, the last time they met up, especially down there, he, he didn't, you know, he, he got injured. You know, he couldn't finish the game. So uh, it, was, it, was a, it was a good thing to see because they're really good friends and, uh, and they compete against one another. But, you know, one thing we talked about afterwards is, like, they maybe made a pack. They said, all right, you score me, I'm scoring you, you know. <laughs> and let's see who can outscore <laughs> one another. So, but, he, yeah, but he played phenomenal. You know, Judah Mintz is, it looked like he took a big step up in that game, too, from the Miami game to that game. It felt like he was more under control at the end of the game. Yeah, I, I, I thought, you know, um, Judah down the stretch was, was great. Uh, he made some really nice passes. But you know what? If you look at Judah from when he started, his very first game to the last game that we played at BC, I, you, you notice that he's gotten tremendously better. Um, and, and, you know, and he has more room to grow. Uh, and and that's, a, that's a great thing for him as an individual, but it's also a great thing for us as a program because, you know, we get to do it together, you know. And um, I, I thought his, his response to when, you know, Coach took him out, he just came to the bench, sat down, and kind of took a deep breath, figured it out, and then went back out there and, and basically won the game for us. All right, last one for you, Griff. Florida State tomorrow night. What can you tell us? Wow. Uh, you just don't know what you're getting. Uh, it's, it's days where, you know, Florida State has played great. They play like one of the best teams in the league, um, especially going at, going into Pitt and beating, you know, a really good Pittsburgh team. And, you know, then, you know, you got games where, they, you know, they don't show up until halftime. So you just don't know uh, what you're getting. But, you know, the one thing that's very consistent is you know that they're a well-coached team uh, with Leonard Hamilton and he's going to have those guys ready to play and we just got to make sure that we come to play and, and take care of our business. All right, Griff. Thanks a lot, man. Uh, you got it.